Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson. Welcome to the next video of your Calculus 2 video series. In this video, we're going to be talking about section 7.2 on trig integrals. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, in 7.2, we see that we often encounter integrals that contain trigonometric functions. And the idea here is we're going to talk about four big strategies we can use to tackle these integrals. Now in this video specifically, we're going to focus on the first two strategies. Specifically, we're going to simplify our integral by converting everything to sines or cosines. And we'll also learn some trig identities that will help us simplify the integrand so that we can actually do the integration. So let's start with our first strategy. As the name implies, we're simply going to look for any trigonometric functions inside of our integrand that aren't sines or cosines and convert them to sines or cosines. Let's look at the first example. The first example, we have the integral of sine times cotangent. And if we just take this and replace the cotangent by what it's equal to, which in this case would be cosine of x divided by sine of x, because cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. Now we can see that we can simplify this, this integrand into just the integral of cosine of x. And now we can just go ahead and integrate it. So that's an example how by just converting everything to sines and cosines, we get some algebraic simplification that will allow us to do the integral. A slightly more complicated example uh, is below. Let's look at this one. In this one, if I convert everything to sines or cosines, I will get 1 over cosine of theta times cotangent of theta, but cotangent again is cosine of theta over sine of theta. And the denominator, I have cosecant of theta, but cosecant is 1 over sine of theta, d theta. And now when I start to simplify things, I have some simplifications here. Instead of dividing by 1 over sine theta, I'll multiply by its reciprocal. In the end, I'll get the integral of 1 over sine theta times sine theta d theta. This is the integral of 1 d theta, which is just theta in this case. And don't forget your constant of integration. So here's our second example of by just converting everything to sines or cosines, we have made this integrand much easier. Now let's look at our second strategy. Simplifying by using trig identities. And so here we have four really important trigonometric identities that you're going to need to know. So the first one is just that Pythagorean identity, and then we have the double angle identity, and then we have two power reducing identities. And you've probably seen all of these in pre-calculus at some point, but here is where they really become useful when they allow us to simplify and integrand so that we can actually do the integration. Now I do want to make a couple comments about these trig identities. For instance, we have the first one as your kind of your basic Pythagorean identity, but oftentimes we'll use it in kind of a manipulated form. So just be aware that if I have this thing and I subtract sine squared from both sines, I would get an expression that looks like this. And this is how we'll often use it. Often in an integral, we'll see 1 minus sine squared and want to replace it with just cosine squared. Similarly, if we subtract cosine squared, we could get sine squared theta equals 1 minus cosine squared theta. So while these two forms aren't new formulas you should memorize, you should be familiar with being able to manipulate the original Pythagorean identity. Now the second one we have is the double angle formula for sine. Another important one to remember is the double angle formula for cosine. That looks like this. That looks like cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. And while we won't necessarily need that a whole lot in this course, one thing to note is that by using this identity, and our original Pythagorean identity, we can actually derive both the power reducing formulas in a relatively straightforward fashion. For instance, if I take my cosine double angle formula, and I simply replace cosine squared by what is equal to, which is 1 minus sine squared, I could get the expression that would be cosine of 2 theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta minus sine squared theta, which would be 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And if I just solve that for sine squared, for instance, I could add 2 sine squared to this side, and then I could subtract the cosine of 2 theta over this side. And lastly, I could just divide both sides by 2 to get this expression. And there I can see that's the formula for sine squared. I could do the same thing to find the formula for cosine squared. Now the idea is all this information on the right hand side of the screen that I'm writing is important stuff to know in general for mathematics. The formulas on the left hand side are the ones you are going to have to know to get through this course. 
And then one last comment about that power reducing formula. Oftentimes when we actually use it, we'll just simplify that fraction a little bit and be rewriting it like this. All right, so now we've worked with these identities a little bit. Let's see how we actually use them to evaluate some integrals. So I have my trig identities up top here, and now I actually want to use them to evaluate this integral, the integral of cosine squared of x. Now the idea here is so just a direct application of the identity. I simply replace cosine squared of x with 1 half plus 1 half cosine of 2x dx. And already I've made this much easier to integrate. And so now I can just integrate it term by term. So I integrate the first piece to get 1 half x, and I get this, integrate the second piece to get 1 fourth, 1 fourth sine of 2x. And then I add my constant integration. Now anytime I do this, I should also kind of verify my integration. This is the piece I'm worried about, so I want to check real quick. To do that check, I can just take the derivative of that piece, and if I've done the integration correctly, the derivative of this should be, bring me back um, to that 1 half cosine of 2x piece. So let's check it real quick. Well, that 1 fourth is a constant income up front. The derivative of sine is cosine. And I have to use the chain rule, so the derivative of the inside function here is an extra factor of 2. Sure enough, I get 1 half cosine of 2x. So that's just me checking my work to make sure I did it correctly. All right, so this is that integral evaluated. Now let's look at a slightly harder problem. So here I have the integral of cosine to the fourth power. So how do I handle this problem? Well, the first step is to rewrite it as cosine squared of x quantity squared. And then I can use my identity on that cosine squared term. So this is now 1 half plus 1 half cosine of 2x quantity squared. And now I can actually just expand uh, that piece. So now I can have the integral of the square of the first thing plus 2 times the product of those two terms. So that will be 1 half cosine of 2x plus the last term squared. So now I have 1 fourth cosine squared of 2x. And I'm integrating all this stuff. And so if I'm looking at that integral, I can do the first couple pieces. I can integrate the first couple terms here. I get 1 fourth x. I would get plus 1 fourth sine of 2x here, plus, maybe I'll pull out that 1 fourth and get 1 fourth times the integral of cosine squared of 2x dx. So this last piece is kind of the tricky piece that I'm left with. But this is just the cosine squared of something. So I can once again apply that power reducing formula. So now I'll have 1 fourth x plus 1 fourth sine of 2x plus 1 fourth the integral of, and now when I apply my formula I have 1 half plus 1 half cosine of, well it's 2 times the argument it's 2 times the argument of that cosine squared piece. So now I have cosine of 4x dx. But the fact that that's 4x instead of 2x doesn't make this level of integration any harder. And so now I can finish up this problem by just finishing up this integral. All right, so that really walks you through the process of extending this idea up to cosine to the fourth. And really, you could extend it up higher using the same process. So in conclusion, we've gone through the first two strategies for tackling these integrals that contain trig and mech fun functions. In the next video, you're going to look at substitution and then using trig identities mixed with substitution. So that concludes this video. Thanks for your time.